subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good health that he has given to us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the resources that he has blessed us with. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us as believers in the Qur'an he says, O oh, you who believe, ward off from yourselves and your families a fire whose fuel is stone and people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us as believers that we need to do everything to protect ourselves from being chastised or being burnt in the fire of hell. Today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I want to remind you and remind myself that as much as we care about everyone, and that's the behavior of every Muslim, that we should be concerned and we should show that care for each and every individual. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man lam yahtam bi amril muslimin falaysa minhum. With regards to the Muslims, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if you do not show concern and care for the Muslims, that you do not belong, you are not part of them. What I want to emphasize today is that, yes, we should show care and concern for everyone. But look around. And you will find that th there are so many who have lost their dear ones. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sometimes your uncles, aunts, grandparents. And sometimes you wonder if people had the opportunity to really tell them something about Islam to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make sure that something was instilled within them that would be a driving force for them to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so today let's Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us with regards to our own flesh and blood, our own families. What have we done with regards to them? Have we given them the message? You know, so often we feel that because people are born into Islam, everything is okay. Yes, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man qala la ilaha illallah dakhala al jannah. He who says that there is none to be worshipped but Allah, he will enter paradise. But it doesn't mean that he will enter paradise immediately. It doesn't mean that he would not have to go through some sort of punishment. 
he will enter paradise because of his belief, because of his faith, because he accepted the kalima, La ilaha illallah, that there is none to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but we want people to be from among those who are praying, those who are fasting, those who when given the opportunity to perform the pilgrimage, that they, the hajj that they would make it, those who will spend their wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who will leave a legacy for others to follow. We just don't want people to say, La ilaha illallah. That's the beginning. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, What more ahlaka? Bissalat was tabir alayha and command your family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Command your people, your family to pray and also to be constant in it. The, the constancy can mean also to, to say to them, Pray. And for them to be praying, constant in terms of you being constant in reminding them, in talking to them often, not to just say it once and you don't do it anymore after that. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks about a great prophet in the Quran and he says about Prophet Ismail alayhi salam fil kitab Ismail innahu kana sadiq al wa'd wa kana rasulan nabiya wa kana ya'mur Ahlahu bis salam was zakat wa kana inda rabbihi mardiya. And remember the Prophet Ismail being mentioned in the book. He was true to his promise, and he was a messenger and a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he says about Ismail and he used to command his family to pray and to give charity and he was constant in it. He used to do it repeatedly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concluded by saying, and he was pleasing to his Lord. And so, it's not about, boy, just pray. Or you say to your wife or to the husband, it is required of you to pray and then you forget about it after that. You don't admonish and admonish just for a moment. But you continuously in a nice way, in the right way, you invite people, your family, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that we normally we forget when it comes to our own families is to repeatedly call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and to keep them on the right path. And so often people ask, my family, someone is sick, make dua. And you're quick to make dua for that person. 
you're quick to make dua for Allah to guide people. How often do we make dua for our own families? How often do we make dua and say, Oh Allah, make my child one who would be constant in prayer. Oh Allah, grant me a pious, righteous family. Oh Allah, make, the, make my family the comfort of my eyes. How often do we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to our own, to our own families? You know, sometimes we make dua and we say, Oh Allah, ha have mercy on everyone, those who have departed from this world. Do, do we include in our dua, Oh Allah, have mercy upon us? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, cure those who are sick. How often do we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure ourselves and our families? You know, look at the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They started with their own families. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Rabbi jalni muqeem as salat wa min dhurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Oh my Lord, make me from among those who are constant in prayer. And, and after that, he includes his family and make my family those who will also be constant in prayer. The Prophet Zakaria, he prayed and he said, Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyiba innaka sami'u dua Oh my Lord, grant me from you a pious, righteous family. We see our families moving in the wrong direction. Sometimes people are up to hitting, sometimes people are up to, you know, saying bad things. I wish you were not part of my family. What happened to the dua? Look at this prophet. He is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, grant me from you a pious, righteous family. The believers before us, they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata ayun. Our Lord, grant us from our spouses and our children the comfort of our eyes. Those children, those uh, wives that will bring coolness to our eyes. Coolness doesn't come in wealth, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It doesn't come only in education. It doesn't come only in resources. Real coolness, real comfort comes when you are satisfied, when you, when you have that satisfaction that my family, inshallah, we will be joined together in paradise. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep us as a family when we depart this world and we spend our next life in, in, in the hereafter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's real coolness. That's real comfort. That's, that, that, that's the comfort that you want. That's the coolness that you want from your families. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Look at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how with simple things he took care of family. The, the son of Umm Salama. Very simple practice. When he was a little boy, he said, I was under the guardianship of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And while eating, I would eat from everywhere. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to me, Ya Ghulam, Sammillah, wa kul bi yaminik, wa kul mimma yalik. 
The Prophet wasallam said to me, that's the son of Um Salama, he's saying that the Prophet wasallam said, O oh young boy, begin with the name of Allah. Eat with your right hand and eat from that which is nearest to you. And he said, after I was told that by the Prophet wasallam, it became my practice for the rest of my life. How often do we ask those who we sit around, we're enjoying the meal with our families, or just in, in a loud way, say it so that you know that they would say it after you, or they would not forget to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we ever think if they have said anything with regards to their Creator, has it dawned upon them that they wouldn't have had this meal had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so we need to begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is so important that even in the small things that we make sure that the ever presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there that people think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, someone told me last week is he is reflecting about so many people dying and so many people close to him. He said, this thing is very scary. You know, it, yeah, it is scary. But we all know that we have to die and we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what would be more, what would be better than making sure that you have done something that would bring that individual if, if he or she passes or you pass that you would have done something to bring that person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that if you if one person accepts the deen through your instrumentality you did something to make it possible that that is the greatest of wealth that you can have and he made a reference to the red camels and the red camels were considered the most expensive camels meaning that you have gained such great resources because you have brought someone close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihim. Every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you is responsible for the ones who come under your authority. And sometimes we think about, yes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Imam Ra'in. The Imam, he is a shepherd. And those who are his followers, he's responsible for them. But immediately after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ar-Rajulu Ra'in Fi Ahlihi Wa Mas'oolun An Ra'iyatihi The man is a shepherd and he is responsible for his family. 
So we will be questioned on the day of judgment as to what we did with regards to our families. You know, I've seen so many individuals. They, they love to talk to others about what is right and what is wrong. And sometimes when it comes to our own families, we neglect to tell them the same thing, what is right and what is wrong. We neglect to give them advice as to what they need to do to make sure that they are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, my reminder to you and to myself is that we need to talk to our families. We need to make sure that we do something good with regards to our families. We can't say that our families, 100%, they are all in the right path. There might be some deviation. Alhamdulillah, if all of them are in the right path, on the right path. If there is deviation, we need to make sure that we are constantly reminding them and bringing them to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he really focus on, on, on young people and, and he told the fathers and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said وَفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَهُمْ فِي الْمَدَاجِعِ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, command your children to pray when they have reached the age of seven. And he said, you should in some way reprimand them when they have reached the age of 10 and they are not praying. And in the last part he said, you know, separate them in beds, don't put them to sleep together. That, that's what is meant by the, 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 the last part of the hadith. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's giving advice with regards to establishment of prayers. And if we are to pass that on to our children, isn't it a responsibility that we have unto one another in terms of uh, husband and wife? That husbands need to make sure that they, they encourage their wives to pray and wives need to encourage their husbands to pray. It's all about togetherness. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْدُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْدُ the believing men and the believing women, they are helpers unto one another. And if you were to look at your, you know, the, a husband and wife who are believers, they, they should be helping each other in enjoining right and forbidding evil. That's the family structure. That's the relationship of the family. That you help each other to enjoin right and to forbid evil. You help each other to establish prayers. You help each other to give charity. You help each other to obey, obey Allah and obey His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went with, with regards to prayers, he, he talked about a, 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 a man, woman, a, in, a, who, a man who gets up at night, prays. And he wakes his wife and if she, she does not get up to pray, he sprinkles water in her face so that she can get up. And the opposite of a wife who gets up. She prays and her husband is not praying. She tries to get him up, he doesn't get up. She sprinkles water into his face to get him up to be one who is 
praying to his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the relationship. It's all about families, the members of the families helping one another to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So like I said, you know, sometimes we look at others. Yes, we need to be concerned about everyone. But those who are just in front of our eyes, those who are going away, those who are neglecting their duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our immediate, our own families, sometimes we do not say anything to them or we do not try to bring them back to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are so many young people today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, who have this, uh, uh, this uh, atheist belief that uh, they, they, they think that there is no God. They have no you know, connection with the Creator. They, they, they feel that uh, th this whole concept of hereafter, Jannah and Jahannam, it doesn't exist. And I'll tell you that it, it is something that we have it among Muslims also, or Muslim youth. When you look at their actions, you see that they don't have any connection or they don't feel that there is the existence of a creator because of the way that they behave. And so we have a lot to do with our own families. We need to make sure that we take care of our families. And in doing that, you need to do it in, in the best way. Don't do like others, you know, you impose and it has to be done. Explain why it's, it should be done or it must be done. Let it be something that is appealing, that people want to do it. ادعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says and invite to your Lord with hikmah, with wisdom, and, and, and excellent preaching. You know, when you talk to people, talk to them in the best way. Sometimes we talk to outsiders, people who are not our immediate in such, in such a beautiful way. And when we talk to our own, we say it in such harsh, impolite way. Look at the prophets. Look at the children of prophets. And look at their conversation. Ya Abati. O oh, my loving father, Ya Bunaya, O my loving son, that's the relationship. You speak in such a way that you attract or you bring people closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Waman ahsanu kawla mimman da'a ila Allah wa amila salihan wa qala innani min al muslimin. And who is better in speech than the one who invites to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Invitation, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's not invitation only for the outside world. It's invitation also for or immediate, like I said at the very beginning, it, it, the command is given in the Quran, invite those who are close to you, invite your own families. And so you can be the best when you invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, starting with our own families, and that we are doing what is required of us. We are doing righteous, good deeds, so our families can see and they can emulate. And that we are showing that we are submissive to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us and our families safe and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to maintain our identity as Muslims. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum. Wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-mu'minat min kulli dhamb. Fastaghfiroon. Innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahabihi Ajma'een, Ridwan Wallahi Alayhi Mila Yawmiddin, Amma Ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, there are so many families, so many mothers, so many fathers who try and they, they, they do their best to keep their families in the path of Islam, to keep them close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the world that we live in today, with the technology, with uh, the, all the social ills that we see in society today, there's so much attraction that distract people from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes people, you know, parents who are trying, making so much, so much effort, fathers, mothers, husbands, wives who are making so much effort, or children who are making effort with regards to their parents, sometimes they, they feel like giving up. You know, why, why me? Why is it happening to me? I, I just want to say to you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, do not lose hope. Whatever you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it. Guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Great prophets, they did so much for their families and still their families did not accept. Nuh alayhi salam, 950 years and at the end, members of his family did not join him. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his, his uncles, whom he wished so much that they would say la ilaha illallah, that they would believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did not believe. Some of, like, Abu Lahab was an arch enemy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His wife used to throw filth in the pathway of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He tried with them, but they did not accept. So we will find this, but don't give up on your families. You, you want to do whatever is required of you. You want to make sure that you have given it your best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be the judge of that. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our families and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep Islam intact in their hearts and in their, in their actions, that everything that they do would demonstrate that they are true Muslims that they are not just born into Islam, but they are people who practice uh, faith with the limbs of their bodies. They demonstrate that faith with the limbs of their bodies. L let us make sure that when we leave this world, we do not leave with regrets that we did not do what was required of us with regards to those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has had made us shepherds for. Every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you is responsible for your flock. And remember, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, 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 he specifically said, a rajulu, 
uh, uh, he is responsible when it comes to his family. He is ra'in fi ahlihi. He is a shepherd with regards to his children, to the members of his family. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum naro. O you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the fire of hell. لَقَدْ أَمَرْنَا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى اللهم من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بالسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض ولكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله على نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قم الصلاة